Let's take a look at John 1.1 1, 1 and find out what the true meaning of Logos really is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. First, let's focus on what this means, in the beginning. The Greek word for beginning there is arche. It is a Greek word used 58 times in the New Testament. It does mean beginning, but not necessarily the Genesis 1 beginning. Mark 1 opens the same way John 1 opens and uses this word, arche, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That is most certainly not referencing the Genesis 1 beginning. Now look at how 1 John opens, that which was from the beginning, arche, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word or the logos of life. First John was supposedly written by the same person who wrote the Gospel of John. And they open almost identically talking about Arche and Logos. But First John says that they saw it with their eyes and handled it with their hands in their lifetime. So the beginning of First John is clearly talking about the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, just like Mark 1.1. 1, 1. And now back to John 1. In the beginning was the Word. Logos is not a proper noun, and it's inappropriate to capitalize word as if it's a proper noun. Logos is used 330 times in the New Testament, and it's most often translated word or saying or account or reason. The primary definition for logos is a word uttered by a living voice, and it embodies a conception or an idea. It is what someone has said, a word or saying or decree or mandate. It is a declaration or a thought or a weighty saying. The definitions continue. It is the act of speaking or a speech. It is a doctrine or a teaching. It is anything reported in speech, a narration or a narrative. It is a matter under discussion or a thing spoken of or talked about. So I think it's most appropriate to say, in the beginning, God had a speech or an idea or a plan. The Bible says God has thoughts or plans for everyone. In Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God told Moses in Deuteronomy 18, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. Jesus claimed to fulfill what God told Moses, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. That means Jesus had to be like Moses from among the people of Israel. And that means he could not be a deity sent from heaven. God spoke through Moses also. Remember when God came to Moses and Moses said, I'm not eloquent of speech? And God said, Did I not make man's mouth? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. Moses continued to complain, so God said, Here comes Aaron, your brother. God told Moses to put those words in Aaron's mouth, and God would be with Moses and Aaron's mouth and teach them what to say. So God told Moses that Aaron would be his spokesman and that Moses would be like God to Aaron. But Moses was not God, and Aaron was not Moses. Just like Jesus is not God, but God spoke through Jesus. Back in Deuteronomy 18, we can show that all prophets who ever prophesied of anything that was true spoke the word of God. So it is a blatant lie in the translation to capitalize word as if logos is a proper noun. But I want to point out another deception that they've done in the same verse. This is what John 1.1 1, 1 really says. In a beginning was the plan, and the plan was by God, and divine was the plan. You see, they switched those last words up, theos and logos. You see, the plan was not God. Divine was the plan because it came from God. So John 1.1 1, 1 is not saying that Jesus was God. It is saying that God had a divine plan where Jesus was going to speak the words of God like Moses. There is even more to the definition of Logos that I haven't shared with you yet in this video. The second definition for Logos is in regard to the mind alone. It can be used to talk about the reason or the account or the cause for something. Here's something I bet you didn't know. When Jesus was talking about divorce and remarriage in Matthew 5, he said if anyone divorces his wife, except for the cause of fornication. The Greek word logos is the word that is translated 
into cause or reason. And check this out. A Greek philosopher named Heraclitus first used the term logos around 600 BC to designate the divine reason or plan which coordinates a changing universe. And finally, the third definition for logos is exclusive to John 1 only. And so they conclude out of 330 uses, John 1 is the only place where logos means Jesus Christ. <laughs> And let me just squash one final argument in this video. Revelation 19.12 says Jesus had a name written that no one knew except himself. And verse 13 says his name is called the Word of God. God is not going to immediately reveal the secret that no one knew in the next verse. So the title that Jesus had was the spokesman for God, but it was not his name. And I just have to sneak this extra credit in at the very end. Did you know that Paul was called the chief Logos in Acts 14, 12? 